Hey guys, my name's Tori. For those of you who don't know me, I typically host the Oz Vlog here on YouTube, and tonight I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to talk a lot about L. Frank Baum. <laughs> and this is a tough conversation, and it may be difficult for some people to hear, but I think it's an important one to have, and so we're going to have it. And I would like to preface this by saying that this is an opinion-based video and you don't have to agree with what I say. I'm going to talk about L. Frank Baum, the recent controversy surrounding the PBS documentary, and I'm going to talk about Oz, cancel culture, and what I think about it. And again, you don't have to think the same things that I think, and it's totally cool if you have an opposite, completely different opinion from mine. Totally fine. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what that opinion is. But at any rate, I would like to talk about L. Frank Baum, why people are angry, and why we need to have this conversation. So basically, people are angry because they found out that L. Frank Baum was a racist for a while there. True story. And this is not new information I'd like to point out, but this was highlighted for a long time in the documentary. And so it sparked a conversation about whether or not we need to cancel Oz and everything L. Frank Baum ever did with his life. To that question, I say no. And I'm going to tell you why, with facts, I think that is the case. But again, you have the right to disagree. So let's start with why the outrage? Why are people angry? The PBS documentary American Oz premiered on April 19th, 2021, and it talked about L. Frank Baum's entire life story, his failures and triumphs, his ups and downs, and yes, his racism. The documentary detailed an article from L. Frank Baum's newspaper, the Saturday Pioneer in South Dakota. He was writing an article in 1890 in response to the murder of Sitting Bull and the slaughter of hundreds of men, women, and children of the Lakota tribe in South Dakota. His response shocked some viewers who didn't already know this about him. I'm going to share that response that he wrote in his newspaper. In his issue of the Saturday Pioneer in 1890 in response to the murder of Sitting Bull, L. Frank Baum had this to say, quote, The whites, by law of conquest, by justice of civilization, are masters of the American continent, and the best safety of the frontier settlements will be secured by the total annihilation of the few remaining Indians. Why not annihilation? We cannot honestly regret their extermination. So that made people angry. And I get it. I get why people got angry at hearing that if that was the first time they heard it. To the credit of the documentarians, they framed this in a very well-balanced way. On one hand, they framed it sympathetically and talked about the drought that had hit South Dakota and how that had devastated the South Dakota economy. They talked about L. Frank Baum's previous financial failures and how he was depending on success in South Dakota to enhance the wealth of his family. He was facing losing absolutely everything. And the fear surrounding a possible retaliation by the Native American tribes could have put the final nail in the coffin of the South Dakota economy, which was what he truly feared. On the other hand, gross. In addition to the sympathetic view, there were some opposing views by the historians they interviewed. One said, Baum is channeling a major, important, and deadly current of American thought. And another said, Baum carried that poison of racism that I carry, that we all carry as settlers. And that pretty much sums up the whole problem, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm not going to actually make any apologies for Baum, and I'm not going to attempt to contextualize his disgusting viewpoints by putting it in historical context. If racism were fully eradicated in the United States, and this was something we were looking back on with a shrug and a sigh, and not something that we were still facing every day, perhaps that would be possible. But it's not. It is still very much something that we confront daily, and 
I can't just shrug and say, oh well, he was a product of his time. Interchange Native American with Jew in his statement. Time has removed us a bit more from the ethnic cleansing that went on in this country with the indigenous peoples who were here before us. But those hurts are still there and that blood is still stained all over this land. This really just came down to ignorance and fear. And this issue of white supremacy and false sense of entitlement that white people had when they took over this land, that they didn't have to deign to figure out the cultures of the people who were here before. They would integrate into our culture or suffer the consequences, which were deadly and inescapable. That fear of the unknown, fear of the other, is something we are very much still confronting today. So yeah, his viewpoints were disgusting. I'm not gonna sit here and make excuses for them. There is no excuse to be made. I understand why people might have been surprised by this if they didn't already know it. Because in every other sense, Baum was fairly liberal. He was an activist for women's rights, which at the time was strange for men. He, of course, married Maud Gage, daughter of Matilda Jocelyn Gage, who is a prominent suffragette, and he supported the Rights for Women movement. As a matter of fact, when his fellow citizens of South Dakota voted down a bill that would have given women the right to vote and equal rights across the board, he chastised them in that same newspaper that he used to call for an ethnic cleansing. It's a startling contrast. So I get why people are angry, and I'm not going to try to make excuses. But does that mean that Oz should be canceled? No. And now I'm going to explain why I think it shouldn't. And no, it's not just because I love Oz. I have actual logical reasons for why I think this doesn't make sense. Walk through this with me. Walk this yellow brick road with me, if you will. So now we're going to talk about cancel culture. And some of you already hate me. As a white person, even saying cancel culture is in itself cultural appropriation because that term made its way into the popular vernacular via black culture. So what is it really? Well, it's accountability. It's just another way of saying boycotting. And I would like to just quickly point out the difference, which is a very important fine line difference between actual effective cancel culture and bullying. Cancel culture, if it's to be effective, is not just canceling somebody you don't like or somebody who disagrees with you. That's not what it's for. Okay? So now that we all understand that, and yes, it is a fine line and it is pretty subjective depending on where you stand, I just think it's a really important distinction to make. So now I've made that distinction, so let's move on. So what is cancel culture? It is intended to be a force by which corporations, politicians, people in power who have popular media platforms are urged to change or alter their viewpoints via social and financial pressure. It's meant to be a palpable and immediate consequence for something that society at large finds reprehensible. This is why to me, canceling Oz makes no sense. L. Frank Baum has been dead for over a century. His work is all in public domain. Destroying your Oz collection, as I heard one collector say they would, or, or urging your local public library to stop carrying Oz books. By the way, they tried that for witchcraft and communism. It didn't stick then and it ain't gonna stick now. Who is that really affecting? Well, it's affecting your local bookstore owner. It's affecting the artist that has rendered the new illustrations for this updated version. It's affecting your local libraries, and yes, it is affecting the children who would derive lessons from it. I'd like to juxtapose this against an author who actually should be canceled. Let's just interject J.K. Rowling here for a second. She has been openly transphobic and has used her platforms to harm the trans community. She is somebody who is also situated in a very unique way to profit directly every time you spend money on licensed Harry Potter merchandise. So, as a consumer, I have made the decision never to spend another dime on a Harry Potter licensed piece of merchandise, another Harry Potter film, and I will never set foot in her stupid theme park. Hopefully one day her views will change, and maybe I will change with her. But until she does, 
Sorry, lady. No more from me. Does that mean I'm going to burn my Harry Potter books? No. I paid for them over a decade ago. So destroying the literature that she created, which is beautiful still, despite the fact that she is gross, actually has no effect on her. She still pocketed my money, and now those trees that had to be cut down to make my book have died in vain. Plus, they are beautiful works of art in spite of the fact that the artist herself is a garbage person. So I'm going to continue to share her art with my child. But no, I will never buy another piece of licensed merchandise again from her, and I will never again fund her lifestyle to give her a larger platform with which to bully the already marginalized. See the difference between the two? One is still making money every time you participate in her grossness, and one isn't. In addition to the fact that canceling Oz would make no financial difference at all to L. Frank Baum or his descendants, his descendants actually took the time and energy to apologize on his behalf. Now, I have plenty of racist relatives for whom I would not feel responsible to apologize, but they understand that they have a kind of public responsibility to carry on his legacy in a positive way. As Mark Baum recently pointed out on one of his social media posts, the Baum family went to South Dakota and made amends for what happened. This was said by Jita Dorothy Morena, great-granddaughter of L. Frank Baum. She said the following, quote, We are here to apologize, to bear witness to the suffering, to that kind of thinking and attitude, and make reconciliation and begin healing. We felt called to do that make a connection with the descendants' survivors, end quote. I don't know if I would feel responsible to apologize for what my great-grandparents did or didn't do. So I think that was a really great move. And I commend the Baum family for taking that step. So what about Oz at large? Well, it is now so much bigger than just L. Frank Baum. Art, when put into the world, takes on a life of its own. Its characters become kind of independent of their creators. Harry Potter feels like a living person, even though he isn't. Dorothy feels like a real person, even though she isn't. Oz is now so baked into the American consciousness, where does one start and the other end? It's really hard at this point to tell. From the 1939 film to the countless books that have come after it, to the graphic novel series, to the songs that were written. Oz is now just a part of who we are, and it's not going to go anywhere, nor do I think it should. I think it's a net positive for the universe, all things considered, even with this disgusting revelation of blatant racism. And hey, again, if you feel the need to get all of your Oz stuff out of your house, if it, the thought of it makes you sick, if you can't stand to look at it anymore, I support your decision. I'm not here to judge you for that. I hope you won't judge me for my opposite opinion, for the reasons I just laid out. This is a very uncomfortable conversation to have, and we have to continue to have it. We have to continue to hold people in power, people with a voice, accountable for the things that they say and the things that they do and the people that they hurt. There's a really interesting quote from a very obscure thing, you might laugh at me, but this particular line from this movie always stuck out to me. In the 1994 film, Swan Princess, the villain of that story said, quote, once you steal something, you spend your whole life fighting to keep it. For the better part of the last 500 years, white settlers have spent their time fighting to keep the things that they stole. The human beings they stole from Africa, the land that they stole from the indigenous people. They have killed and systemically suppressed anyone who is considered the other of the day, whether it be black people, gay people, trans people. This is our past. It is also, in a way, still our present. It is not going to be our future. We need to keep calling out the people who create, and we need to demand better. L. Frank Baum was many things. He was a father, a husband, a women's rights activist, a creator, a genius, a visionary, and a racist. Perhaps not for all of his life, 
But in that moment in time, yes, he was. And yes, that is sad and disappointing and confronting. But the Oz fandom itself is about inclusion, positivity, and progressive values. If we continue to hold each other accountable, the future of the Oz fandom looks bright from where I'm sitting. So thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Please leave a comment down below, negative or positive. I'd love to hear what you think. This is just one person's opinion and you are entitled to disagree with me fervently. <laughs> if you do agree, I hope that you will give this video some positive feedback, a thumbs up. Hey, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. We're usually a lot more fun than this. And yeah, to me, Oz has been such an integral part of my life, has given me a sense of belonging. So I'm going to stick with it and hopefully make it better from the inside as we must do with all things in the world. I think especially on a week like this, given the recent news, if there was ever a moment to acknowledge the past wrongs and make change, it's now. Good night, guys.